Okay, so continuing with lapel guard passing. Just a little quick fix on taking the slack out of the lapel. So Dave actually takes one side of my lapel out. If you notice, there's about two foot of my lapel there. So now when he sits back and tries to to get into worm guard, because my, my gee's still in the lapel, when he actually comes up this side, it's very little um, gee for him to turn this with it. There's very little um, lapel for him to um, work with. Whereas if he took the time and used his foot to open up this lapel, and both lapels are loose, now when he actually gets in and gets into this worm guard positions, he has a lot of material to play with. So um, up until now we've addressed different passes for squid, um, worm guard, reverse delta worm, um, and um, a lot of the fully locked um, lapel guards. Let's look at sometimes the best approach is um, before before he actually gets into the pale guard positions. Um, so we're thinking about just putting a whizzer on our own lapel as he does his grip switches to try to get into worm. So let's just say he's got my lapel, he starts off in stirrup position here. I know David wants to then drape this foot over my hip if he's going for like a worm guard position. So the minute he does, I'm just putting a whizzer on um, my lapel. And now what's going to happen is when he passes it off, I'm already bringing the lapel this way. Sometimes I might even make a grip on the pants and start to pull out this way. I keep going over. And I can make a grip on his pants. And now I'm already stressing his grip. Just turn this way. David um, has, um, is in ringworm guard with a left hand grip. He needs some kind of, uh, just he needs some kind of um, profile on the lapel. And already I'm pulling it this way with this grip. So the minute he tries to do this, the switch off, I'm just stepping behind, pulling him back in. And again, we're into a cover how to pass him all these positions, linking it to our um, cradle passing. Once I come up from here, I can bring my left knee in, and now my right hand can find the collar. And now from that position, second knee comes in, pulling the underhook, replace, replace. Again, just give my hand on my It doesn't have to be from worm guard, it could be from squid or any um, other um, groups. But let's just say, as David tries to bring his foot over, let's just say he already has this leg in, and as he starts to pass the lapel under, I'm already bringing my own hand inside. Okay, now I know he needs a bit of material here, so already I'm making a grip here and starting to um, use elbow pressure to pull the lapel this way. So now when he does his grip switch, that just gives me the moment to back step into it. And again, my knee comes up, find the collar, second knee comes in, when the underhook, replace, replace. Again, one more time on that arm. Just, um, yeah, we can back the cameras are perfect. So, Davis and stirrup, and then he goes to drop that leg in. I just put a wizard on the lapel, and now as he sits up, if I can make a grip anywhere in the pants and start to flare that elbow a little bit, all I'm doing is taking the slack out of the lapel. I don't want slack in the lapel because then it's an easy grip switch for him. Now he's very little to grab. If you notice where, let's turn this way. His grip's actually between my legs. His arm has to come the whole way in there. And all he's concentrating is on the pass off. And that just gives me the moment go. They hit the pass, or hit the back step. So now, when he was trying to make that grip switch, it gave me the opportunity to hit the pass. So that's just a quick fix. Um, trying to stop the passes, the pass switches from the bell guard before he actually fully locks. This lapel guard is a good um, strategy to play against.